Okay. That should be it then. It was fairly quick episode or because I know the mechanics already. I went through with it fairly quickly. Let's clean up here a little bit and then we can enter the tribunal. I'm pretty much confident in solving the case. Excuse me. I wonder if changing the interposition changed something. Excuse me. Excuse me. I think I get it. <sighs> we didn't necessarily have anything for this confidential bureau data, so we missed one thing apparently. So, I think we're fine. You don't look too happy, Hal. Aren't you worried about Ash? Of course I am. But right now we need to focus on the threat to the city. It isn't safe for us outside the dome, and we don't have enough time to get all the sleeping residents to safety. Our only choice is to save the city. Okay, time to go. Special Supervisor Hal Sion. Identification code confirmed. This private trial will commence shortly. Hi, Ash. Miss is a private trial. All information disclosed during these proceedings is strictly confidential. Additionally, witness Keith Tozaki will be privy to the contents of this trial. <laughs> now on this side. Conditions in augmented dreaming continue to worsen. If news of the incident were to go public, further mental contamination would be unavoidable. Supervisor Sion, you are in charge of this case. Present your findings and indict the culprit. Immediately. <clears throat> Start by making your case report. The victim's name is Irie Clover. It appears she was a researcher at the Quantum Interference Research Institute. At 10.30 this morning, she was discovered dead in one of the hotel guest rooms. The scan of the body indicates the cause of death as hemorrhagic shock. Next, I'd like to discuss four suspicious details on the guest floor where the murder took place. Hmm. Please provide details. Allow me to go over what we found during our investigation. First, there was Mr. Tozaki's ransacked room. The alarm issued from the staff room. The room the murder took place in. The unit corridor. We need to establish exactly what happened at each of these locations. Time to submit our findings. Hmm. What did you find in Mr. Tozaki's room that relates to the incident?
The stolen property. What took place in the staff room? That's where the service drone was attacked. What did you find in the room that was connected to the incident? The implement used to bludgeon the victim. The weapon used in the murder. How did the culprit escape? The culprit's escape route. They destroyed the security drone. That concludes my overview of the suspicious details found at the scene. Based on that, we can reconstruct the murder itself. Hmm. Based on this information, your reconstruction has a 71.6% plausibility rating. Unacceptable. <laughs> okay. Supervisor Sion, what are we to do with these fragments you offer? You must supplement your findings in the reconstruction space. Understood. Initiating crime scene reconstruction. I mean, I think it's gonna be easier than the first episode, no? At least it seems like it. Essentially, I need just to focus and then go with the details. The reconstruction is based on the whole floor 30 minutes before the estimated time of death. Allow me to retrace the culprit's actions at the time of the incident. Here goes. At this point in time, 30 minutes before the incident, there are two people on the floor. Keith Tozaki, who'd returned to the hotel and was under constant surveillance. And the victim, Irie Clover. She'd been hiding in the room the murder took place in. Routine cleaning of the guest floor began. At this point, Mr. Tozaki moved to the lounge. The culprit arrived on the scene just as Keith left the guest floor, judging from their lack of hesitation. My assumption is that the culprit knew the victim was staying at the hotel. The guest floor is patrolled by two drones. To succeed, the culprit needed to distract them. How did the culprit manage that and make it to the victim's room? Allow me to demonstrate. It's still not Ash's uh, silhouette. Who knows, though? 10 a.m. The culprit arrives on the guest floor. Let's trace their movements. This is a bigger scale because the hotel is bigger. I should get it on the first try. Guest room 201. Cleaning complete. At this point, a service drone left Mr. Tozaki's room after finishing cleaning. <laughs> they then entered the staff room opposite. The culprit seized the opportunity and broke into Mr. Tozaki's room. There are two drones patrolling the floor. It would be impossible to evade both drones and reach the crime scene, which is why the perpetrator stole something from this room and destroyed the service drone. The culprit stole 
Time to show them what the culprit took from this room. Acid case. I'm just looking at the different options because it's very clear. At this point, the trunk was locked. However, the culprit quickly opened the trunk and checked the contents. They then proceeded to steal one of the items they found inside. Right. Time, Time to pick, pick up the item they used to destroy the service drone. Yeah, because there's gonna be a second one. Hmm. Okay, you don't need to lay it and think like that. The weapon the culprit stole from Mr. Tozaki's room was... The EMP weapon capable of disabling a drone. That lines up with the service drone's log data. That's how the culprit ransacked Mr. Tozaki's room and got their hands on a weapon. Yeah, because the service drone would take your weapon, like, mate. At this point, the culprit left the room with the item they stole. Can we take something else? Excuse me. Hmm. Yeah. I guess not, okay. Then, after heading out into the corridor, the culprit spotted the service drone entering the staff room again. At this point, they had to make a snap decision. Follow the service drone into the staff room, or head to the scene of the crime. Time to reconstruct the culprit's actions. The culprit followed the service drone into the staff room. Once inside, they proceeded to destroy the drone. What did they use to accomplish this? The weapon they stole from Mr. Tozaki's room. Sorry. The culprit disabled the drone using the EMP weapon they brought with them. I think you're onto something here. It makes sense they'd use that to knock out the drone. Now you've seen how the culprit disabled one of the drones patrolling the floor. Abnormality detected in patrol matrix. Alert level 1. Initiating analysis of affected zone. When the service drone was destroyed, the alert level for the entire floor was raised. The culprit then picked up the service drone's arm before any other drones arrived. From there, they made their way to the crime scene. The security drone headed to the staff room to check on the status of the broken service drone. With the coast clear, the culprit moved along the corridor at the rear of the floor. They avoided the security drone and headed to the room where the victim was. That's how they reached the room where the incident later took place. They then pressed the intercom button to lure the victim to the door. Hearing the intercom, the victim hurried to the door and opened it. In that moment, the culprit Hit the victim on the head with the arm from the service drone. This is how the culprit gained access to the room victim Irie Clover had been hiding in. This room. What about the moment that we hit the battery pack? Was he way before here? Was being used by Supervisor Ash Shepard as part of his surveillance duties. The victim was spotted near the entrance to the clock tower the morning it rang out. 
I've personally seen her with what appeared to be a clock tower key. My hypothesis is... The culprit attacked her in order to obtain the key. You can see from the fact that the room was in disarray that the culprit was looking for something. When searching the room, the culprit came across the projectile weapon. <laughs> no, this is At this point, they noticed Miss Clover was beginning to regain consciousness. Before fleeing the room, the culprit turned the weapon on the victim. Here, the culprit aimed the weapon at... ...the left side of the victim's chest and pulled the trigger. This was the fatal wound. It's a brutal reconstruction. Your account matches up with the scan data from the corpse, Hal. That concludes my account of how the victim was killed in the hotel guest room. The culprit then fled the scene of the crime. When the culprit stepped into the corridor, the beta who overheard the sound of gunfire from the room came to investigate. Abnormality detected. Eliminating target. Oh. As the beta prepared to attack, the culprit... It was a ricochet from him, then. This is it. I think so. Destroyed the beta with the projectile weapon they were carrying. <laughs> wow. The impact sent the beta shot off course, destroying the device on the ceiling. Ah, so that's how it happened. And that shows you how the culprit avoided the drone's attack. The culprit then proceeded to evade security and make their way to the elevator hall. Right after that is when we arrived on the scene. We didn't run into the culprit though. Which begs the question, how did they escape from the guest floor? I need to try and retrace their escape route. The culprit entered the staff room, which was open when the evacuation alert went out, and left the building via the emergency exit. The culprit then fled the hotel. This should be 100%. A little while after that, I arrived. I was with Mr. Tozaki, who was back at the hotel and under surveillance, when we found the body. That concludes my account based on the findings of my investigation. But we still don't know who did it. I mean, we didn't show it at least. Like, do we care that much about the reconstruction? The victim, Irie Clover. She was killed by someone who wanted to steal her clock tower key. I have reason to believe the culprit is still out there, on the run. Hmm. Was there a point to it? Da, but... That was a truly impressive reconstruction. Every element of your argument was interlinked and well supported. I have no doubt your reconstruction is as close to the truth as we can hope to get. I hereby accept your findings. Very well, Supervisor Sion. All that remains is for you to indict the suspect. Ah. Help! The culprit is... <laughs> I mean, I don't think there's other choice, honestly. Supervisor Ash Shepard. Based on the evidence found at the scene, 
Mr. Shepard is the most likely culprit. You're right. Removing confidential files from the Administration Bureau. Harboring and then killing a fugitive. Simply unthinkable conduct for a supervisor. Eustace. I hereby permit the use of firearms. Them. If you find Supervisor Shepard, your orders are to terminate him on sight. That concludes this private trial.